You know, for all this talk about groomers, it seems as if anti-LGBTQ plus bigots are the ones who are more obsessed with trans people's genitalia and what gay people do in the bedroom more than anybody. It seems like they're the ones who are projecting when they call other people perverted because they can't stop talking about and thinking about queer people's sex lives. And that's really bizarre for people who are supposed to be disgusted by LGBTQ plus people. Now, this isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. This has been happening all throughout history. But lately, as we've seen an increase in transphobia and homophobia, bigots have been asking more questions as sort of a gotcha when it comes to the private parts of trans people or the sex lives of gay people. But I don't think that they realize how weird this makes them look. For example, sitting member of Congress Marjorie Taylor Greene put out this disgusting tweet about U.S. Assistant Secretary for Health Rachel Levine saying, we must do everything we can to prevent Dr. Dick Levine's preteen hashtag weenie chop. Very classy for a member of Congress. She adds, now that I think about it, as Dr. Dick Levine advocates for gender-affirming care for minors, has she undergone the weenie chop herself, or is she just pushing this on children? So obviously, she's trying to misgender Rachel Levine here, but this is incredibly vile and disgusting, speculating about somebody else's private parts. I mean, you're a member of Congress. Why do you care about what's between other people's legs? Why are you so hyper-obsessed with trans women? Why don't you get a life, Marjorie Greene, you disgusting fucking piece of shit? Why do you constantly focus on what other people are doing in the privacy of their own homes or what they have between their legs? I mean, she thinks that this is actually a gotcha for Dr. Rachel Levine, but really this makes her look like an immature imbecile. And also she's misrepresenting what Dr. Levine said in that short clip that the GOP is freaking out about. Now the RNC also pushed the same lie that Marjorie Taylor Greene pushed, saying Biden Assistant Secretary for Health Rachel Levine says we need to empower kids to go on puberty blockers and get sex reassignment surgery. Now, first of all, I guess I should give them credit for not misgendering Dr. Rachel Levine because that's apparently something that is very difficult for conservatives to uh, not do. But they're not representing what she said accurately. They're saying that she claims children should get sex reassignment surgery, but that's not what she's saying. Here's what she said in a very short clip that ruffled so many conservative feathers. We really want to to to, to base our treatment and uh, and to uh, affirm and to uh, support and empower these youth, not to limit their participation in activities and sports, and even uh, uh, limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. Oh my God, how controversial that somebody would dare to say we should maybe try to empower trans youth rather than demonize them, let them live their lives in the way that they want to. She did not say sex reassignment surgery because that's not something that's offered to minors. What she's referring to is social transition, letting trans youth use their preferred pronouns, letting them express themselves as the gender that they identify with, puberty blockers. But they, uh, they hear sex reassignment surgery. That's what they hear. But that's not happening. And they pretend as if U.S. healthcare is so good that sex reassignment surgery for trans people, including trans youth, is available like that as soon as you want it. But we have a healthcare crisis in this country. Even if you're a trans adult, getting sex reassignment surgery, getting bottom surgery, is very difficult. It's very expensive. So you honestly think that it's that easy? Have you had any experience with the American healthcare system at all? You think it's that simple? That if a kid on a Tuesday decides that they're trans, by Thursday they can get sex reassignment surgery? I mean, I'm being hyperbolic here, purposefully so. But what they're saying here is wrong and demonstrably wrong because this is not happening. Now, look, I could point to the plethora of studies showing why gender affirming care for trans youth is medically necessary. I've shared the meta-analysis conducted by the Trevor Project where they review dozens and dozens of studies that prove gender affirming care not only is medically necessary, but it reduces depression and suicidality, but they just don't care. They would rather have trans youth commit suicide than live as they want because they don't want trans people to exist. So what they wanna do is either force them to live 
live as the gender that they don't identify as or force them to be so miserable that they kill themselves. That's the reality of conservatives in America. These are sick, twisted, perverted people, and this is who they are. Now, Rachel Levine was not the only target of conservatives because a uh, swimmer Leah Thomas was on Dave Rubin's radar from the Blaze TV, and he decided to speculate about what is uh, in between her legs as well because this is something that they always think about, apparently. Here's a tweet from the Blaze. What's going on over at UPenn? UPenn nominates transgender swimmer Leah Thomas as 2022 Woman of the Year. Now, as I say on this topic, I don't mean to be a dick about it, but uh, she is a dude. Uh, Leah Thomas has a penis. We did some research on that. Now I'm going to rip the mic off and walk out. <laughs> Leah Thomas has a penis. That's it. I'm out of here. Um, it's complete nonsense. You could, I suppose, and remember, she, she ranked something like 467th when she was a male. Now she's a female with a penis and she ranks the number one. <laughs> she's the number one. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. And also, wouldn't the penis bog you down at that point? Like if you're going to swim as a chick, wouldn't you get rid of the penis just for the ability to get through water faster? Yeah. It's a, oh, it's a propeller. That's funny. That's funny, man. Donuts work with you. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Dave Rubin is a gay man who is married to another man who is having two children with his husband. So let me ask you this, Dave. How are you having those babies? I mean, two men, this doesn't work. Are you going to push that baby out of your asshole? Is your husband? Are you guys going to breastfeed the baby? That seems really unnatural. Yeah. See, these horrible questions that I'm asking, rhetorically speaking, are the same things that Dave Rubin's conservative friends are asking about him behind his back. The same way that he suggests that Leah Thomas's existence is unnatural is the same thing that conservatives are saying about him and his decision to have two children. Now, Dave Rubin thinks that if he can be a good gay, one of the good queers, and throw trans people under the bus, then perhaps when fascists inevitably take over in the United States, they'll be less inclined to throw him in a blender. But unfortunately, the reason why they view Leah Thomas as unnatural is the same reason why they view you and your husband and your family as unnatural, Dave. Because if you are born a certain way, there are expectations. You have to dress a certain way. You have to be attracted to and date certain people. You have to only engage in sexual intercourse with certain people. So the way that Leah Thomas is unnatural, according to conservatives, is the exact reason why they view you as unnatural, too. Dave Rubin should know this as a gay man, but he's being purposefully obtuse because, again, he wants to be one of the good ones. But nope. Sorry, buddy. Now, it's not just the genitals that conservatives are concerned with. They also are really interested in the sex lives of queer people as well. Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire tweeted out, still waiting for gay men who are having random sex with strangers during the monkeypox outbreak to get lectured and scolded by public health authorities the way that the rest of us did for going to grocery stores and restaurants during COVID. He adds, if we could be expected to give up our regular lives for a year and our kids were expected to give up their education, can't we expect gay men to stop having orgies for a few months? Isn't that a reasonable sacrifice to ask of them so this is just some classic homophobia where you refer to queer people as overly promiscuous and all that they think about is sex but really this is projection let me ask you this matt walsh as a straight man how do you know that so many gay men are attending orgies and furthermore why are you thinking about other men attending orgies if you are a straight man this seems a little bit bizarre no. And let's be perfectly honest. If Matt Walsh was gay and if that was acceptable in conservative circles and, you know, there were these public health messages asking gay men to stop having orgies, he would be hysterical and scream freedom and refuse to get vaccinated and refuse to change his life at all because that's what these idiots did during COVID where they wouldn't even put a piece of cloth over their faces. So, I mean... I don't know what you're talking about with regard to this inconvenience because conservatives wouldn't do anything. But for you to go out of your way to demonize gay people, you know, it's almost like it harkens back to a time in history when we tried to treat gay people as if they were diseased pariahs. As Lance from the Serps put it, leave it to a sexless theocratic fascist who can't do his own laundry and is obsessed with children's genitals to reignite the gay panic HIV AIDS scare. And he's exactly correct. There's already a lot of conservatives who are talking about monkeypox in the same way that conservatives talked about AIDS during 
the HIV AIDS crisis in the 80s. And, you know, they do this purposefully so to treat gay people as diseased pariahs to be avoided because you don't want them to spread their disease to you. They're nasty, they're promiscuous, and they can't help themselves. They're just constantly having sex and attending orgies. So stay away from them to protect your own health and safety. That's what they're trying to promote. So these conservatives are disgusting and perverted. They are incapable of not thinking about queer people having sex, about what's between the legs of trans people, and it's gross. They're just projecting. In fact, somebody who was supposedly anti-groomer was arrested for child sex abuse. And that's not to say that that issue has general applicability and every single conservative is going to be a pedophile if they feign outrage over grooming. But the obsession over queer people and trans people's genitals is downright bizarre and weird. And whenever a conservative talks about what's between the legs of trans women or what gay men are doing in the bedrooms, understand that they are sick and they're likely projecting some weird insecurity that they have onto everyone else. Right here. Right here. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 